today we're going to speak especially essentially about um, sound control. And there is two different aspects about sound control, or three different aspects that, uh, that revolve around sound control. And so today is more of a, a chat rather than a technical mathematical uh, uh, lesson. So this is not Chuck Norris type of stuff. <laughs> okay, let's just, let's just quickly understand the whole issue of sound control. As an engineer, your aim is to control sound. That's the bottom line. You want to do this because you want to have the capacity to control, manipulate sound. So instead of approaching this topic simply on an electronic point of view, in other words, the gear, I'm going to approach this topic on a more holistic point of view because there is more to sound than just electronics. Okay? Even though we think that we can mix anything today with any program, with any computer, that's not quite right. Um, they, they still don't even come up with a program that does the mix by itself. Or maybe they have come up, but I can tell you it's not particularly successful. So we're going to be looking at three different aspects of sound control. The first thing we're going to be looking at is sound production architecture. Sound production architecture. So think of yourself as an architect. So this will be lesson four. What does an architect do? He, he plans a, a building. He plans and drafts a building, a house, with, with specific criteria. Now, that's exactly what you do. In fact, a word used in, in sound engineering is system design, which is something that is a very fascinating topic. Is if you were a consultant and you were given a venue to do sound, to place a system inside that venue, you would design a system that fits that venue according to the need of the venue and according to the requirements or the brief given to you by the clients. In other words, there would be a big difference whether the venue is used for speech or for rock concerts. For classical type of uh, music that might require some reinforcement or a, a substantially, totally uh, electronic type of music which requires every single sound to be processed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you were the sound architect, you would have to design the system that work for that venue. So that's why I would like to look at this, at this concept, sound production architecture, because it should really help you to understand how to approach sound and sound manipulation or sound control from a more holistic point of view rather than simply gear. I really stand by the motto, years before gear, and uh, I think we have too much gear at the moment. In, in the world we have too much, in, in society we have too much equipment, which means we don't know how to use it and we don't know how to choose it. So we have a lot of potential, but very little capacity to unlock that potential because we don't have an understanding of the bigger picture. Okay. So let's quickly define the sound production architecture. Uh, sound production is the journey necessary to facilitate the perception of sound from perception to, sorry, from production to perception. So let's say you're on a stage, okay? You're making sound on a stage, but the audience is in, in the audience. So there's some kind of a journey required from the actor, the musicians, the singer that is placed on the stage to get that sound to the people, okay? Think of, in another example, you might be in a recording room and your audience is not in your room, but is in a living room. They will listen to your product maybe a few months later, a few years later. You still have a journey. How do you go from where the sound is produced to where the sound is perceived? So this, this sound uh, production architecture looks into the journey of the sound, from when it's conceived to when it's perceived. Okay? And the interesting thing about this journey is that no matter in which context you're undertaking the, the, the journey, it's always, you're always going to go through the same stages. And that's why if you understand this concept, it would help you immensely to produce sound properly and correctly. We will, we will look into uh, some of the implications of this architecture, but first let's just define it. So the best way I've 
come to do this is to design five blocks, like a block diagram. One, two, three, four, five. And therefore, it becomes a chain of events. And the five block are the five stages of sound productions. So let's first name them. Then we're going to explain them briefly. And then we're going to draw some conclusion. The first one is called input transducer. Sorry, input sound field. Sorry, input sound field. I'm going to name them all, and then I'm going to uh, uh, explain them. The first one is input sound field. The second one is input transducer. Then we have signal processing. And then we have output transducer. And the last one is listener sound field. Okay, so think of this as a chain of events. We got from the input sound field to the listener sound field. So we uh, conceive sound, we perceive sound. In between, there is a journey. This is kind of the journey of sound. If we understand this, whether you're doing live sound, whether you're doing recording, whether you're doing broadcast, live broadcast, whether you're shooting a movie and then you uh, do the sound staging of that movie, whatever it is that you're doing within the sound production, you're always going to have these five stages. So if you understand this, you understand the whole concept of taking sound from where it starts and deliver it to where it ends. So let's start with the input sound field. Therefore, we're going to define sound field, and this is applicable to block one and five. What is a sound field? A sound field is an enclosure of air, which can be literally like a room, or can be like an area, like a stage. A stage is not closed, but certain things happen in a stage. So the input sound field is the sound field is that arena or area where sounds are produced. Okay, like think of a stage. That's where the sounds are produced, and that's where the band or the actor or the singer utters his sound for the first time. Okay? The reason why this is important is that if we get it wrong here, it will affect the whole chain of events. If you get it right here, well, you start in the right, with the right foot. Now, most of the issue happens here. In fact, there is a very famous producer, Josh Massenberg, which is the inventor of the parametric equalizer. So it's an absolute genius. He's a producer. And he said that in every single production he's done, his first aim is to sit in the room with the band and check that it works within that room. He said there is no point in going to the recording room if, he, if it's not sounding right here. It makes sense, doesn't it? Huh? So now this is a several Grammy Award winner, inventor of the parametric equalizer, absolute genius. If he says it, I think we can take it from him. So the input sound field is where sound are produced. And now our task here is to capture them in a way that can preserve the integrity and can uh, enable us to manipulate them or control them effectively. And we look at a number of issues here. Okay. Then let's quickly go further. We have input transducer. What is a transducer? A transducer, it's a word that stands for a converter or a, trans or a translator. Uh, we, we have a lot of understanding of converters. In, in physics terms, a transducer is a device that takes a type of energy and transforms it into another type of energy. Think of the dynamo of a bicycle. It takes the, um, what would you call it, mechanical energy of uh, the wheel spinning and translates it into electric energy. The light goes on, okay? Think of the turbine of a water plant. There's a waterfall, the turbine is turned, electricity is created, same principle. Now, what is a transducer in our world? Well, the most obvious one is the microphone. 
It takes mechanical energy or dynamic energy, sound waves, and translates it into an electronic signal. Okay, so there's always going to be some kind of transducing required because sound is in the domain of acoustic waves, is in the domain of mechanic energy. But we manipulate most of it with electronic devices. So we need to kind of make that translation at some point. And generally that, or most of the time, or it always happens just after the sound is created. You can't do it before. Okay, so input sound field, input transducers, signal processing. Signal processing is where it's kind of the heart of a sound system from an electronic point of view because the sound is processed in, that, in this block. What, what belongs to the signal processing? Mixers. Um, any type of, of uh, audio devices or audio processor. A compressor, an uh, equalizer, a gate, a reverb unit, you name it, they all fit in there. An amplifier is part of signal processing. We're taking the signal and we process it, we control it, we manipulate it, we do with it what we like and then it goes to the next stage. The next stage being the opposite of what we saw in block two, which is the output transducer. What is the output transducer? It's, it's the opposite of the input. So it takes electronic energy, transforms it to mechanic energy, acoustic waves again. Obviously, we're talking about speakers. Headphones is still a speaker. In, it's a, headphones is a, it's a speaker in miniature, but that's the same principle again. This thing gets electronic signal here. There's something here that moves and recreates whatever um, wave that was there, whatever signal that was there in a, in, a, in a waveform. It translates it into mechanical energy, acoustic energy. And we listen again. Okay? So we, we started with sound here and we end with sound again here. Now, the only difference is that block number five is also a sound field, but different from the departing sound field. Think of the living room or your car while you're driving, you're listening to music. You're hearing music that was made in another room. So that's your listener sound field. If you were in an audience, your listener sound field is the audience, is the gallery. That's where you're sitting and watching the show. Or in the church contest, is where you sit and you are participating or witnessing or looking at the service. Even though you are within the same room, you've got a stage and an audience, it's one big room, but it's conceptually two different sound fields. And therefore, they should be treated differently. Because in the input sound field, we produce sound. In the listener sound field, we're listening to sound. That's kind of difference. Okay. I think this far, there's not much to understand or question. Now, here there's some observation, some very important observation. Number one, two of the five block number one and block number five are part of the acoustic domain. While the block two to four belong to the electronic domain. So if you look at again, conceptually, block two to four creates or gives life to what we call a sound system. The sound system is this one. Input transducers, signal processing, output transducers. That's what a, signal, a, a sound system is. Okay? Just from a conceptual, architectural point of view. Block one and five are still part of the uh, sound production, but they are part of another domain. Now, here it's, it's interesting to to uh, note a few things. Firstly, the reason why I called it um, sound production architecture and not sound system architecture is because these five blocks include stuff that is not part of the sound system. Okay, because think about it. With a sound system, I can do nothing here. I can't control how the sound is produced. From an electronic point of view, the, the guy, the saxophone player is playing that thing. There's nothing I can do electronically. But 
there is stuff that I can do in another domain. And the other domain is the domain of acoustics. Because I can do something about the environment in which the sound is produced. And the environment consists a lot of what I perceive of that sound. Example, think of a saxophone. I often use this saxophone example. But think of a saxophone, saxophone that is playing in a room. Okay? Now take the same saxophone and go outside. Does it sound different? Hugely different. Think of a drum kit. Have you ever noticed a drum kit playing live without a sound system? Suddenly there's no, there's no body to it. What happened to the bass drum? What happened to it? It was so loud in that room, now it's not loud anymore. What happened to the life of the kit? It's because the saxophone or the kit, they were using a lot of what the acoustics of the room was contributing to those instruments to produce an overall sound. Are you with me? So if we understand this concept, which is not difficult to understand, we understand that sound control or sound production goes beyond electronics. But unless we understand this concept, we will fail to control sound effectively because there is moments in the sound production that you cannot control mainly with electronics because there's nothing to do about sounds bouncing off a wall with any type of electronics, even though people will tell you with, uh, with some ad advanced electronic device you can control it, it's not really true. You can change certain things in the system to compensate for certain things happening in the room, but that is only relative, and your degree of success, again, is only relative. Because it is obvious it belongs to another domain. If I need a... If, my, uh, if I have a burst pipe, who do I call? Or do I call a singer? Do I call a singer that comes with his mic? Huh? So if I have an acoustic problem, why do I call a, a sound, uh, why do I call a, an electronic expert to fix something that belongs to another domain? Does it make sense? Okay. Are you with me? So let's just quickly, while with it, while we are at it, let's quickly define a sound system. A sound system is, is, is uh, an arrangement of electronic components with which we are able to relay sound from a source to an audience for whichever reason and purpose. In another word, a sound system is the mean to help others to hear. Because remember, we got people producing sound here and people listening to sound here. With a sound system, we enable these people to hear what's happening there. So we're doing a good thing. We're helping people. Helping people is always good. So our job is pretty good. We're helping people and we helping people to listen. And now this sound architecture, as I said, is the same. Doesn't matter what you do. The only difference is that some of the terminology changes. To give an example, an hearing aid. You can think there's an input transducer, there's signal processing, and an output transducer in an, input, in an hearing aid. If you think of the intercom at the airport, it's kind of a weird sound system, but it is a sound system. It's still the, 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 the sound system at the shopping center, also a sound system. And they all work with the same principle. Can you understand why this is important? If you get this, you can think correctly about any sound production and uh, be effective. 